foundation. This is where it all started. You who have accepted Christ as your Savior, that foundation is in your life. This is the history. This is where it all began with the birth of Christ. Today, um, we, we think about the times and celebrating the birth of Christ. We're going to go to the Word of God. But when I was reading in the Word of God, and I was reading the history of the birth of Christ, and I was uh, reading the foundation, um, I realized this is the foundation of our faith. And it's so neat to realize that the Scripture gives it all. It lays it all out there for us. We look at the birth of Jesus Christ, and we realize and I'm going to tell you here, I want you to think with me. President Obama recently said, America is not God's country. Wow, maybe a statement like that. We've got to realize, we have to realize, and you would be amazed how often it is, um, we often go to Washington, D.C. because we have family there, and we are we're able to often see the White House. Supreme Court just recently went. We stood there at the Supreme Court. Uh, there's scripture on all the buildings you go. There are scripture building on all the monuments and all the buildings. Everywhere you go, on the Supreme Court, every building has scripture. Engraved. And still in there. But we have a picture we've got about it. But we're ignoring it. We are ignoring God. We are ignoring what that God has been so good. We are ignoring that He is our counsel, that He is the counselor, that His word is our counsel. He is the wonderful counselor. How true it is. God is the best counsel we could have in life. And how does that happen? When it says that He is our counselor, realize that God counsels you, He advises you in all decisions. Life. Do you want to have that advice? You can look at God. You have got to realize that He is the one that has got to give you counsel. You know, we should be from the place that we don't look for advice. For spiritual needs, for wisdom, for decisions, we don't want to look for advice and counsel. Look at Isaiah again. In Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10, it says, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. These are help. And a lot of us today, even as Christians, we know we become dependent on doctors, medicine. And I know there's a time we have to. I know we've got to be wise, we've got to listen to what the doctors say. It would be foolish if we didn't listen to those that are specialized in that area. Because they study in that area. I mean, I go to call all the time to the doctor, he takes his little things out and he listens. And he'll say, breathe in. And he puts that little thing on your back. Breathe in. You have arthritis. How does he know that? Well, the doctor knows. They, they've been taught what they're looking for. They know the body. And there is wisdom. And so I'm saying that wisdom does come from doctors. And prescriptions can come from doctors. And they tell us what to do. And they tell us how to do it. They tell us where to get the prescription. And you read it now, it's this weird thing, right? And you wonder how they even understand it. And you take the I don't understand it. It's scribble. But I take it, and I get my prescription, and the pharmacist gets it, and they know exactly what the doctor's saying. I go to the pharmacy, I go to the grocery, I love to watch people, and there's all these medicine, shelves and shelves of prescriptions, and all different names. Big, <laughs> very big words, and I don't know. And I, you know, I'm not a vocabulary. I, I don't know. I'm glad I'm not a pharmacist. But can you imagine having to memorize that? All those medicines, all those different prescriptions, all different colors, all different pills, big pills, little pills. 
and they'll take they'll, they'll say take three times a day and you have to follow the instruction, give them by the doctor and uh, have the MGs, all these things, the milligrams, all these and all these different prescriptions. The doctor knows it. Pharmacist takes it, he knows it. I sit back and say, where did they learn that? Well they study. And they spent time learning the words. It's part of science. They, that was part of the medical field. That was how they do it. They studied it. All those different things. You know, sometimes I take them and they relax me. Have you noticed that? Sometimes you've got a headache. Like a really bad headache. Terrible headache. And you take an Advil and in two minutes it starts going away. And so the, the doctors have to advise you. I'm here to tell you that that's their job. They have to advise. But when you have a spiritual problem, what are you going for advice? You have no hand. Don't forget, no hand. You have spiritual sickness, where do you go? God, you God. He is the best medicine at that time. You've got to go to him. The sad thing of it is, is we get depressed and things, and then we get more medicine. And I'm telling you, there, I, I'm not knocking that. I'm not knocking all of it, but for spiritual things. We kind of go, God, he is the best doctor. Realize that he will constantly, constantly give you the advice you need. You pray and you seek him and you say, Lord, will you give me the wisdom that you have of your counsel? And he says, yes, I will. And he counsels you. There is a word. He gives you his word. And it's a help to you. God is powerful. He is the best counsel of you. You know, I find it interesting also. Uh, Christians, are we perfect? Do we really have super men and super women? Do we have people that are perfect most of the time? No one. So I want you to think with me. Every one of us have problems, don't we? Almost have problems. If, we, if you were asked, you'd all say, yes, we all have problems. Every one of us in here have problems. So thinking that we all have problems, realize that the best thing that we can do is depend on His guidance in our life. We have the Bible. We have the Old Testament. We have the character of David and Nehemiah and all these characters in the Old Testament who went to God for wisdom, who went to God for advice, who went to God for counsel. In the Old Testament, all these characters constantly asking God for the counsel. Look at Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. What's it say there? It says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. To help in time of need. You know, it just so happened, and I'm not going to give any names here, but I was looking on the internet, on internet news. And I was, it's a Christian news page. And it was talking about suicide by pastors. Boy, that bothered me. I, I, I said, God, I don't understand that. And I know people go through depression in those, but we have the word of God. Suicide among Christians. Do we come to the place? Do we get so far away from the place that we accept the counsel of God? Lord, I'm failing it, and my life is over. We've got friends who are committing suicide. <coughs> what a waste. If we get depressed because we're failing, we just need to come to the place that we accept our, our failures and ask God to renew our minds, to renew our hearts. We need to go to Him for counsel. Will it cause us to think he's there to help us in times of need? God is there. The scripture again and again comes and it's with us. We're just, we do get discouraged. We have problems with help. Help. We get we have family situations. There are so many things, financial situations, so many things out there that cause discouragement. We've got to come to the place that we remember God. He is in our place. I mean, anything we need. He's our counselor. And so you say, I want to keep joining my heart. I want to have that. Go ahead and counsel. 
It's so interesting that the Bible teaches us to rejoice. And at Christmas time especially, focusing on the birth of Christ, there should be great rejoicing. Great rejoicing because God is with us. And he came again and again to be with us. He came, Emmanuel, God with us. He came to be a help. And we've got that. Discouraging times, we realize that God is there to us. And times are deep. And sometimes we say, I don't think God can help me. Oh, yes, he can. Amen. No. He's there to help. We go to him with me. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 20. It says, Hear counsel, look again, hear counsel and receive instruction. Instruction. You know, I find it interesting. A lot of you, uh, you read the Bible and you find, you find, you read the, you know, you read the Bible. When you read about characters in the Bible, they all had problems. Most had problems, they all had problems. Every biblical counselor, every biblical character had problems. Paul had problems. Peter had problems. Everyone who knew about the scripture had problems. But they made a determining factor. I'm going to do right. I'm going to follow his instruction. When I fail, I'm wrong. I'm going to go to him. And I'm going to again hear his instruction. I'm going to listen to God. I'm going to listen to his counsel, listen to his advice, and depend on him to help me. So it says receive instruction for God's will. Receive instruction. For spiritual needs. Receive instruction right here. Let me give you an example. Have a bad day. You have a bad day, this is what you do. You get back into the Word of God and you listen to counsel. You hear counsel. You listen to that counsel. And you know the Word of God is so encouraging. Always. So you listen to counsel, you hear counsel, and you receive the instruction. Oh, that's what I need to do. That's what I need to do. You have a bad day? Listen, realize no matter what happens, it's going to be all right. If you go to God, through your counsel, if you go to Him. If you go and you commune with Him, and you listen to Him, and you take the advice, the counsel, and you listen to the instruction, and receive that instruction, and there is so much instruction in the Word of God. There's so much there for us. But we've got to come to the place that we listen to it. We receive it. And then like that's what causes the Lord. Hear it. Hear counsel. And what does it say? Receive <coughs> God with us. Foundation there. It's there for us. What is your foundation? Are you here today and you say, I want that foundation. I want to keep it my family. I want to keep that good foundation in my marriage. I want to have that good foundation. So you're going to work out. Instruction. You say, I want to have a good life, I want to have a good future. It's all there. The instruction's right here. In the Word of God. Back to the Word of God. Again and again. We have a tendency to listen to friends, we listen to the radio, we listen to all these people. That's bad. A lot of times that's bad advice. It could be bad advice. Your counsel has got to come from the Word of God. Realize that is the best counsel given. And you can have that part of your foundation. You've got to make God's word part of it. Bring it into your family. Bring it with your children. I, I'm having trouble with my kids rebelling. I have problems. Go back to the word of God. It's all here in the word of God. This is the best instruction. I'm here to tell you. Oh, well, I'll blame the church, and I'll blame this person, and I'll blame that person, and they gave me this advice. Well, it's a mess because you need to blame yourself because you've got counsel from the wrong area. You've got to go back to the Word of God. So you're facing temptation, you face trials, you're going through some hard times, struggles in life. You've got to hear the counsel. You've got to follow the instruction. Let's go down to number three. Number three, the Messiah. And we call the mighty God. Mighty God. Oh, do you think about the power of God? You didn't know the power of God. The one that rules this universe, that controls the weather, 
there's three things that I thought about. I thought that God is, when I thought about that He is omnipotent, He is all powerful. So, the body of God is omnipotent, He is omniscient, He is all knowing. I mean, He knows everything, He knows all things. You know, I know. You know, I don't know what's going to happen in your life, but God knows everything. Number three, He is omnipresent. He's everywhere. So, I, so those three things, the mind of God, and I find it interesting. I got through the concordance when I was studying this week. A lot of you, you know, you have your Bible concordance in the back of your Bible, and, and then someone's got concordance outside the Bible. But just, I, I got my concordance, I placed it on my desk. And I look, um, it's strong concordance, you know, you have a strong concordance, that's one of the old ones. And I look for mighty. I look at the word mighty. And I thought, whoa. There were pages and pages of scripture, over a hundred of scripture about might, about his might. I'll look at 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Look what it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6. It says, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So I'm looking at strong concordance and I'm looking at the word might, mighty, powerful. I read through some of those scriptures and I thought, wow, it's the power of God. And I explain, I can't explain, I can't measure his power. He is so powerful. God, and this is the God that controls our universe. This is the God that controls your life, your body. This is the God that has made you. How very amazing that is. When we think about the might and the power of God that He's in the He's all knowing that He's in control of everything. I look in the mirror. And I look at my face. I look just like my dad. I look just like I have the same nose. I mean, I look just as a Kim. Kim, do you think that I look like my dad? And she said, oh my goodness, you look like your dad. You look just like your dad. In my personality, yeah, you got a lot, you got quite a bit of your dad in you. Uh oh. <laughs> so now you know my turn, and I and I look at his family. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> she acts like her mom. She is very much like her mom. Her mom loves to. <laughs>
did you actually remove those letters from my ear? And I believe he's going to say, yes, I didn't have a reason for it. You have questions? My mother had me. I had to, I, first my sister came, she was deaf. They, they said it was genetic with my sister. There's no death in our family. And then all of a sudden, mom and dad had a deaf daughter, and then I came, and I was deaf. And the doctor said there's no reason. The doctor said they don't have any pains and nerves that are in the back of the ear, and you don't have any. My sister and I don't have any. We had no sickness, no fever. Mom was not sick. We are just missing those nerves in the back of our ear. We were born that way. And God, he makes no mistakes. And it's amazing how he has all this in his plan. Wow. My God. Gives me so off. But we look at the scripture, going back to the scripture, and it says, humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God. The mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. So everything. And if you're here, you just have to be able to find this line. He said, I'm going to be willing to have it. I'm going to be able to believe that he will exalt you at his time. Don't forget. I'm going to God. I'm discouraged. We will be exalt. We exalt him during that time. He will exalt you when it's his time. We get to look where we just look. We get to look at things, bad situations. We should have no time for that. There's no time for discouragement in these days because God is there. He's there to help us. God is there. He's wonderful. He's amazing. The might of God. And so we say, I have needs. Well, He's there. God, Lord, I need you. I need you to help me in this situation. It's really weighing heavy on me. I'm depressed. He's there to help. You better believe that He's there to help. Yes. We go to him and believe him. We submit it. We submit it. We have God to believe. He is a mighty God. And he is an awesome God. It's that he does things that we can understand. And he will constantly be there for us. So think about the mighty hand of God. He will resolve for us. And do the right. He makes a decision. And oftentimes, things happen within our bodies that we don't understand, or physically, and God says, wait a minute, I'm in control. It has to be done in my life. I don't understand things that happen. I don't understand cancer. I don't understand him taking people. I think he brought Brother David Hansen, pastor from Kansas City. I love David. Just a precious man of God. David is an awesome Man. And he is my brother in Christ. He is a humble, uh, humble man. Now, I feel prideful when I look at David. I feel prideful, like a prideful person. He, has, he shows so much humility. Got cancer. The doctor said, You cancer for you. And David had a fight, I mean, just really bad. To get where he's cancer free. Just a few weeks ago, they said the cancer's fine. They come to this with humility and being positive. How to do that? I don't understand that. And I don't know, but God is working in the life of David to show us something. He's 60 years old. I learned, I learned um, Jonathan's dad out. Jonathan's dad, Eugene. Before I wait for it, I feel like He said, do not ever ask why. Why me? Don't ever say why me. Don't ever say that. And I said, what do you mean? He said, um, he said, they have cancer. He said, why not me? Don't ever say why not me. Jonathan's dad said, Eugene said, never say that. He said, just accept that God has a plan. And thank God that you don't have cancer. God has a plan. And he, he said, he said, God has a plan. It's all in his plan. He told me that before he passed away. God is a mighty God. And I want you to believe with me that God is also.
also patient. Uh, and his mind is very patient. He's patient with America, a country that's brushing inside. The attitude we have, love, and God's very patient. Billions of people all over the world are dying. <coughs> Jesus is going to come and there'll be the tribulation time and they'll, they'll realize the eye of God at that time. <coughs> Revelation and prophecy and all those things about his coming. About destruction and the bloodshed and all those interpretations. Does Congress, has Congress heard any of that? Well, they have Bibles. It, it would be crazy for us as a people to brush the mind of God aside. He's a mighty God in the four, and I'm going to this quickly in the four. The Messiah will be called the Everlasting Father. The Everlasting Father. You know, it's interesting. When you, um, once you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, and you believe that He's the Son of God, you have an everlasting Father. Your everlasting life. He becomes your Father. John chapter 3, verse 16, verse 36. <coughs> John chapter 3, verse 36. He that believes upon the Son hath everlasting life. He believes, he that believes not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abide upon him. John chapter 6, verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. When you die, one day you're going to meet Jesus. And he's going to say, welcome, you believe in me, welcome home. And can you believe that one day you're going to be in eternity in heaven? Now understand with me that life here on earth is very short. The average age is about 80. People die around 80. But we have an everlasting father that we're going to everlasting all. And that is forever and forever and forever and for eternity. Everlasting life in heaven. What an awesome thought. I praise God for that. That calls a rejoicing to me because I'm going to live with him forever. I have an everlasting father, a father that I will live with forever. Number five, the Messiah is called
Romans chapter 5, verse 1, that will be justified by faith. We have peace with God through, now understand, hold on to that. What does it say? Therefore, being justified by faith. America and, it, and our religions here in America think that it's through God only. That, that a lot of people think, well, we, well, we have a higher being, we can focus on God, and we do have we do have God, but it says through our Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> there is no other name under heaven. Nothing. <coughs> Understand what it says that there is, therefore we just by faith. We have peace with God through <coughs> our Lord Jesus Christ. And all, you know, all these religions will say, you know, all men's never right believe in God. Tell the witnesses. God, but they don't believe in Jesus Christ. They have lost it. I'm sorry. Because what does it say? We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. It's got peace with Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 4, verse 7. Where verse 7 says, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So, you want to have peace in your life? You're looking for that peace? Put this in your mind. Put it in your heart. Make it part of your heart. A lot of people on my council don't have peace. They're involved with this sin and that sin. They're allowing the flesh to control their hearts and minds. And you'll never have to <coughs> Sin will never, never bring peace. The true peace comes putting the word of God in your heart and in your mind. The word of God. Bring it in. And the last thing I want to share with you is Psalm chapter 34, verse 14. That's the of scripture. Who says? Who says? And today, I talk to Christians all over. They're struggling. I have problems. I struggle. Why is it? Pursue God. They're not pursuing God. What does it say? Depart from evil. Leave evil. And do good. Seek peace. Seek peace. And pursue it. Pursue it. I have a problem. I have a flesh problem. <coughs> So this morning, the best gift that we have at Christmas, the best gift of God, is that of peace. So thinking about the birth of Christ, without the birth of Christ, without Jesus coming at this specific time of year that we celebrate, rejoice, peace, because he himself is our Savior. Emmanuel, God with us. He came to save, he came to protect, he came to deliver. Outside of the earth. Jesus comes into your heart, your life, and feel good. If you don't feel it, something's wrong, if you don't feel that way. So maybe you're here today and you say, God's going to be for you this morning. And I don't know what Jesus, but we, 
always open the altar, a time of dedication, a time to make it something to write in your heart, realizing how awesome his birth was. Thank you, God, for your word. Help us become a place that we understand. Take it and apply it to our hearts and our lives. Amen.